YouTube is it going? The Goat House is back with a Buffalo Bills preview and things to watch. I'm really excited about this one, actually, because I think most people, not everyone, but most people have the Bills wrong right now. And we'll talk about what I mean by that in a little bit. But uh, change it up on this one as well. First comment. First comment on this video decides which team I, I will do next. So we'll see who wins that race. Should be fun. But going over what to watch, questions, things to expect, players to watch, games to watch, and fans takes for all 32 teams, all separate videos, a playlist on the channel. The Buffalo Bills, number three, wide receiver and tight end. So that whole that entire receiver core alignment and rotation. Very curious. So it's a little bit of a question. How do they use these guys? How does the rotation look? How do they divide up the snaps? But I kind of have an idea how they'll use guys, but um, it's something to watch. Definitely something to watch because it can really throw off opposing defenses because there's so many different varieties that they can go with on any given snap or game to game. So teams watching film, looking at where these guys align, and they might think they're they they might think they know what the Bills are throwing at them, but they might have some you know completely different looks. And you know because you have Dalton Kincaid, who's a tight end, but a receiver like tight end that we'll talk about more in this video as it goes on, but could align pretty much anywhere. You know, Dawson Knox can align anywhere, but more of the inline tight end. They add Curtis Samuel, who we'll talk about more in this video. You know, a key guy we'll talk about, uh, but a guy that's really played well in the slot, but I think they have a plan of, you know, could he be a Stefan Diggs type player, play him on the outside more kind of fitting that Josh Allen, uh, you know, type play, Getting you know using his speed, getting open downfield, but he could be used as a gadget guy as well. And again, you could use him in the slot. But their main slot receiver was a breakout from the end of last year in Khalil Shakur, who could continue to break out. Uh, and then Keon Coleman is an outside contested catch possession type receiver. But there's a few guys in there that you can kind of mix it up and do different things. And again, Curtis Samuel, we'll talk more about him, but he's a guy that you kind of get the ball to in any level of the field. So it kind of creates some mystery and I love that. So that is something to keep an eye on. And, it, and it's not just fun. It's yeah, it kind of makes them a tough game plan in my opinion, if they do it right. So uh, definitely something to watch there. Number two, believe it or not, this defense should improve. It actually should be better. And that is one thing that I think people get wrong. Maybe not Bills fans, because you know they're going. Everyone's fans are going to be optimistic, and you should be, especially if you're a Bills fan, in, in my opinion. But uh, I think most people think, well, yeah, they lost both their safeties. I think the safeties might be the biggest thing, but they lost both their safeties, who were aging, by the way. Uh, you know, and, and they were more just cover two guys, and the Bills are got so predictable in cover two. The last, you know, last year they started to mix up a little bit more, but they got so depleted on defense. Uh, you know, so they're trying to mix it up a little bit more. Uh, but people think they lost Tredavious White, you know, so it's a it's a downgrade. I, you know, I don't think so. He hasn't really been playing, and he and he's kind of went downhill a little bit as well when he does play. Not that he's bad at all. He's still solid, still a smart corner. Um, but you know, and everyone's like, yeah, Von Miller is declining, and but they have a lot of young good players that are continuing to improve. And look at last year where they were for most of the year, where they were at the end of the year, where they barely lost the Chiefs in the playoffs. They were extremely beat up. They had injuries everywhere. Uh, the biggest one, Matt Milano, their most important defensive player, injured out for most of the year. Easily their most important player. He's back, so by default, they're better. By, like, getting healthier, they are better. And I, I think people don't realize that. Even, you know, and then don't forget, they traded for Rasul Douglas at the trade deadline. He was fantastic for them. He was a little beat up at the end. He was de Even when he was playing, he was dealing with a little bit of injury, but he was great for them. So now they get Douglas from the start. That's big. Benford's a little underrated. He's continuing to get better. Uh, there's, yeah, you know, going, going back to the safeties, they lost Poyer and Hyde. They got. A deeper room, in my opinion. Now uh, they had Mike Edwards, who was fantastic for the for the Chiefs last year. I love Cole Bishop. I was a huge Cole Bishop fan. I think he fits the Bills uh, fantastically, really, and uh, I think he could be a factor as a rookie. So they have a and they got Taylor Rapp back. They have a deeper room there, um, you know, and so they can do different things. Obviously, so I actually think again, young guys like. Greg Russo, who we're going to talk about a little bit in a little bit, Ed Oliver. You know, these guys are going to continue to get better as well. So I actually think this defense, it, it could get beat up. We got those people that think they got worse, could be right. 
if they have injury issues again. But if they stay healthy, to me, this defense actually it should improve. Kind of by default, getting healthier. Young guys stepping up. The guys that they've they've added. Uh, Terrell Bernard's another one that impressed last year. Um, you know, an up-and-coming linebacker here. So I'm actually excited for this defense. I think more people should kind of get on board with that. So defense could be very solid. And what they're trying to do is, is get less predictable because the years that they were really, really – there was years where they were number one defense going into the playoffs um, statistically or close, and, and they were not good in the playoffs. It's because they were predictable. It's like cover two every play pretty much. So can't do that in the playoffs. Game plan is a factor. Uh, you know, so they're trying to gear away towards, and they took a step towards that last year, but it, they, they got beat up. Um, so it was a little tough. So that's, it's also, it's a good thing going forward to kind of mix it up. And then number one kind of branches off of that a little bit and where I think people have the bills wrong. Uh, people talk like the Bills took a step down, like looking at them on paper, uh, mainly, again, I think people look at the big names, like the like Poyer, Hyde, like these guys have big names uh, on defense, uh, you know, and uh, the main one on offense, Stephon Diggs. I, I don't think, I don't think this team takes a step down. I understand why people think it, looking at it on paper at first glance. I think to me, this is still one of the top legit contenders if healthy that was the thing last year they were not healthy they were very very close to being the Chiefs for a little bit in that game like the Bills are gonna win this game but down the stretch what played a factor the Chiefs holding the ball for a long time and um, executing in the end them being the best team in football but in that you know what played a part is the defense of the Bills being you know thin you know thin thin on players so they were that close while I don't want to say depleted but you know because at least they had guys like uh, Josh Allen, James Cooks, and the, the offensive line, but they were pretty beat up, like I, like I keep saying. So uh, there was that good of a team. Remember how hot they got at the end of last year, that stretch to win the division, make the playoffs? Like that was a legit team, and they were legit when they played the Chiefs. If they just had a little bit more, a little healthier, they would have won that game. Could we be talking about them as the Super Bowl champs? Um, maybe, maybe. It's hard to say that, you know, full, you know, that it was a sure thing, you know, definitely not that, but, um, but I, you know, they added, they lose digs, but they had multiple pieces. There's young guys in the offensive line that can, that should continue to get better. James Cook's a hell of a back. He should be getting better. Uh, people don't talk about Josh Allen, like potentially getting better. I think the guy could get better. Like he's already a star player. His only knock, he's just a little careless with the ball to throw some interceptions, but he's that good while doing that, you know, so he actually has room to improve, which is scary because he's an elite star player of this league. One of the very best in football. You know, so he could actually cut down on the turnovers and be a better player. And then defensively, we kind of went through the defense already. I think it's a pretty solid defense. They're, they're a pretty balanced team. They're a pretty balanced team across the board. There's no spot where it's like, that's bad. I think people talk about the receivers, but they got some guys that can play. They don't have a Stephon Diggs. They have some guys that they can play, and you have to factor in the tight ends, guys like Kincaid, which we'll talk more about that in a second, but uh, um, you know where he can align. So... Uh, they have that that star at, in the most important position at quarterback, and they have the rest of the players as well. I think this is a legit team just if they're healthy. I think people – I noticed it when I ranked them, you know, in my power rankings, you know, somewhat high. People think I should knock them down. They, they need to be lower than they were, they were before because on paper they might not look as good. But I think it kind of goes a little deeper than that. So legit contender if healthy for sure for the Buffalo Bills. Tell about three players to watch. Curtis Samuel, we touched on it a little bit, but I was kind of saving a little bit for more for right now. Um, but big shoes to fill. Number one, with you know losing Stephon Diggs, but uh, if he's like they're trying to get him to be that type of player, doesn't need to be, doesn't need to be Stephon Diggs, obviously. But why he's on here, I'm very curious. It's a player I really I want to see how they use him because remember he was a running back turn receiver and has been pretty good his whole career so far. Now gets to play with Josh Allen, that's fantastic. Um, so learning more and more of the receiver position, learning what Josh Allen this this team this winning attitude team. Uh, be pretty big but again he's played all over the place coming like a gadget guy he's played outside but where he's done most of his damage in my opinion uh, is inside he's played a lot of reps in the slot but they have Kalo Shakur who is that is it's firm that is a slot receiver that is a slot receiver he broke out last year so Samuel, you're almost going to have to put outside but he's not going to be stuck doing one thing right they're going to use him in gadget plays 
you know, it's not like they can never put him in the slot. You know, Shakir's not going to play 100% of the snaps, of course. Uh, but I'm curious. I'm curious, like, how is that going to work? Does he take a step up playing on the outside with Josh Allen? It's a pretty important that he plays pretty well. It's a pretty important role, believe it or not, here for Curtis Samuel. So that is one I am, like, I'm excited to watch. I'm curious to watch. Uh, number two, a potential breakout guy in Greg Rousseau. Uh, young edge rusher from Miami a few years ago when he went into Miami he wasn't even the plan was to put him at edge but he actually wasn't an edge rusher Um, you know but people saw the upside there obviously and that's what that's what he was coming out in the draft as well he was he was an edge rusher but it was like you just see the upside because he has freakish length with length with freakish length with freakish athletic ability and he's pretty solid you know for for being a raw guy that's still learning the position so this guy was not supposed to be lights out right away nobody said this guy needed to be that guy right away that wasn't part of the plan and it's okay you know he is a high upside raw prospect so and he's been pretty decent took a little bit of a step up last year wish there was a little bit more production, but now is the time. Now is his chance, and I think it's about that time for him to break out, and it's where they really need him because they need somebody to, you know, to really step up and be consistent off the edge. So it's a guy that I'm expecting a breakout year you know, from, and it's a big year. You know, He's got to do it. He, it's Now is the time for him to take. He doesn't have to be a monster. Like He doesn't need to get like 15 sacks or anything. Like We're not going to demand a certain amount of sacks, but a step up. And he's heading in that direction, so signs are pointing towards that, so I'm excited to watch him. Number one, no question, in my opinion, no question. People, I don't think people realize you know, what Dalton Kincaid means and what he can do for this offense. People talk about they lost to Fon Diggs. That, you know, people say that's bad. It's a big time player. You know, they, they, they can't lose him, but who's going to replace him? That's the question. That That's why people are down the Bills. Like, it, it looks like it could be, you know, technically Curtis Samuel, and then people will go, well, that's a big downgrade. Samuel played in the slot a lot. You know, he's going to fully replace Stephon Diggs, and I think he's, you know, that receiver on the depth chart, but I actually don't. I think people are looking in the wrong spot to replace in terms of impact, in terms of impact of Stephon Diggs uh, and leading receiver. Potent, you know, potentially like the biggest game changer. People are looking at the wrong spot and saying they need a receiver to replace Diggs. They have it in terms of impact in Dalton Kincaid. I'm telling you, I think this guy I'm, it might be a little bold. I don't think it's that bold. I think he's going to lead the Bills in receiving yards. I think he's going to have a shit ton of receiving yards. We saw him kind of get going and break out last year. He was a factor. And I think teams started to game plan for him a little bit more than you know Joe Brady wanted to go different routes. He wanted to run the ball a little bit more fair and it makes sense but I think Dalton Kincaid is really about to figure it out this year I mean he kind of already figured it out but people don't realize that Dalton Kincaid he's not really a tight end like he's a tight end and a receiver to me you line him up outside he go to work you line him up in the slot he goes to work you could line him up in line but I think we're going to see a lot of receiver reps from Dalton Kincaid inside and out I think we're going to see snaps with him outside Shakur inside and then, you know, maybe the other outside receiver could be either Samuel or Coleman or Kincaid outside, uh, Samuel inside, Coleman on the other side, or, you know, Kincaid in the slot, Samuel and Coleman outside. The different looks, I think, starts with Dalton Kincaid. Um, he is going to be a mismatch problem. He's going to a lot of, a lot of, you know, we saw a lot of production when he was at Utah, like insane production, like record breaking tight end at Utah uh, as a as, uh, pass catching tight end, receiving tight end. We're going to see that. We're going to see that. In this Buffalo Bills offense, they had this plan when they drafted Dalton Kincaid. It was a little bit of an out there pick. They had this in mind. Uh, so watch out for Dalton Kincaid. It is a very important big time piece to this offense. I think people are looking. I think people just got the Bills wrong in general. They they think the team took a step down because they lost this guy, like they lost that guy. And the defense is much worse. When I think it's definitely better because of health and because the young guys they added to allow them to mix it up. And I think people are saying, well, they they lost Diggs. They don't have that impact. They don't have a guy that could step up. They got a secret weapon. It's not shouldn't be too much of a secret at tight end that can also play receiver. So um, I can't wait. I cannot wait for Kincaid. It's a big time fantasy option for your for everyone watching that play. I'm sure everyone does. Um, I'm excited to watch the Bills. Uh, games to watch. We actually didn't put the Chiefs on here. We can easily put the Chiefs on here. We can put the division games on here. 
Uh, but these are the games that stood out for a specific reason. But I'm excited about at, at Ravens, a primetime game in week four. Uh, and there's a three-game stretch, week four, five, and six, where it's all away games for the Bills. And it's Ravens, Texans, Jets, division rival. We saw them lose to the Jets in week one last year. Um, you know, so that's huge. So that these are kind of part of it. I try not to put the divisional games on here because those are obvious. But the Ravens, you know, the two best running quarterbacks in football, perhaps, you know, in prime time, both pretty balanced teams. Just they're they're sure thing good teams. Like these teams are going to be good. Ravens and Bills, Lamar versus Josh Allen. It's gonna that's gonna be so much fun. In week four, we're, again, I always talk about it. the first few weeks. It's like teams are a little sloppy. Kind of anything goes. It just try to escape with the win. Uh, week four around that range. All right, let's go play some football. You know, this is the time. And we get Bills at Ravens. Like, yes, yes. And then the Texans is part of that. It's a week after. They have a three-game stretch against tough, tough teams away. So that's the reason it's up there. Tech, another reason, Texans are an up-and-coming team. They're a really good team. Like, they can contend right away. Uh, and Stephon Diggs is there. So Stephon Diggs revenge game there. So it should be a lot of fun. And I end up putting the Niners, a big one, actually. The Niners in week 13. Why this is a big one. This is the biggest one, actually. It, it, it's because it's right after the bye week. So what does that mean? Look at last year. They were like, all right, the Bills might not make the playoffs or what the hell's going on. They hit the bye. They you know, let the Eagles game, which was a little sus with the officiating, slip away, and they had the bye week. Boom, they won five straight. One of the hottest teams with the division getting the playoffs. They have the bye week late is uh, again this year, week 12. They have six straight games then. It's crunch time for the Buffalo Bills. The first one on that list is the Niners. Uh, a Super Bowl-like matchup, a tough matchup. So can they can they get going in that play? It's like it's playoff mode time for the Buffalo Bills after the bye week in a playoff type game. Even though they can't, they don't have to play. They only could play them in the Super Bowl because it's the Niners. So that's the biggest one to me. So excited about that one, of course, and all the divisional games. Because those are always good. The Patriots even could be a little sneaky on the Bills. We've seen that in the past. But the Dolphins-Jets game should be epic. Uh, and we'll take a look at some fans' takes. I had, had quite a few interest in the Bills. We always put the X uh, subscribers from Twitter slash X up there. Aiden Weingartner, who I know is a Bills fan. What is he What is he looking for? Uh, how does the Bills' offense look? We, yeah, we didn't talk too much about Joe Brady. Like He's the full-time guy now. So it's a good point that kind of that, – that, you know, that's good. You know, going into the year, knowing you're the guy, not kind of get, you know, thrown into that position. How does he balance the pass and run? Um, I I thought he could have been a little more. That was the only knock I had on Brady. Is like he kind of w- would go away from like what was really working. He was kind of like insisting on doing his thing uh, at times. So that was kind of the only thing. But I, I'm I, I'm all positive for the most part here with Joe Brady and the Bills. Um, so that's yeah, it's a good point bringing up him. Uh. Yeah, I kind of mentioned Diggs is gone. How the receiving production passing offense look this year? That's a big question for me. It's you know, how are they going to mix it up? Uh, but I think Dalton, he mentioned Dalton Cade as well. Um, I, I think, yeah, people are missing that. Kincaid will be, and I could be wrong. I could be wrong for sure. It could, you know, it could, who, who knows who leads that team in offense? But I'm pretty uh, confident with Kincaid being the biggest impact and being the biggest unique piece there. Uh, how the defense look? Uh, without yeah the veterans gone we kind of touched on that and I think people yeah Hyde Poyer White like yeah those are big losses those are I think they're looking more into the names a little too much you know some people uh and then Cam Sullivan who will step up as receiver one receiver two yeah in terms of actual receiver I, I think it's Samuel and Shakur for r- right away but again I, I Kincaid is almost he's a receiver really like he's not your traditional tight end and especially where the league is heading so. Uh, are we allowed to factor him into that? Because I put him at one. Um, will their offense? Yeah, a lot of the same stuff here. More two tight end looks. I think we'll see a lot of two. That's a good point. I think we'll see a lot of two tight end looks there. Uh, because I don't really want to go full load for for Coleman uh, and Shakur. I don't see a ton of reps on the outside for Shakur unless I'm wrong. I, I firm, like strictly a slot guy. So he's not going to get a load of re- like snaps. He's going to get quality ones and impactful ones. But, um, so a lot, a lot of two tight end looks, um, 
yeah, you know, tough to, tough division schedule, so it's going to be a battle there. Uh, Anthony Kramer, offensive routine with Joe Brady with life without digs. Yeah, so what? again, he's got his own flavor because it's hard for him to do that when taking a playbook that not fully, and these are good points, bringing up Joe Brady for a couple of these guys, um, kind of making me think of things because he's, he's basically taking Dorsey's playbook last year um, and trying to do his thing. That's tough. That's tough. So now he has his own take. Now he has his own playbook. What's it going to look like? Again, I think a lot of mixing it up, a lot of different looks. I think they valued they, – they wanted to trade digs and get, get more guys that can give different looks So because they're going to value that a little bit more. That's a little bit more in a, at a cheaper cost too. So um, that's got to be the plan. Uh, yeah, Keon, Keon Coleman, a character, definitely one to watch, like a fan favorite or a league favorite really for uh, football fans. So definitely one people are going to be watching. Uh, defensive backfield, yeah, I didn't. I, I touched on that maybe a little bit, but a good point, like rotation and depth, kind of the same thing we said for receivers and tight ends because they have a number of safeties. I love Cole Bishop for this defense. I hope he starts. I hope he gets a lot of reps, but they got a number of guys, uh, obviously. So that's a good point. Maintaining health on defense is absolutely huge, and James Cook and Dalton Kincaid to take the next steps. They should, right? Uh, and then a few other guys that weren't uh, subs will take some other guys uh, on Twitter that just like to play along. Eric Bounce, so I you know recognize the name, been, been a, uh, you know with us for a long time here, so I uh, had to take his. The Bills, he has kind of some some takes, just straightaway takes. Love to see that. Uh, it doesn't have to be just questions. The Bills will have a top five defense. Secondary is legit. Milano is back, and we see more vintage Von Miller. So like this because it's a few things that I mentioned. Like the defense is good. Like it's better than you think because Milano's back. The secondary is pretty deep. It's underrated. It's good. So the, kind of the similar points there. Um, but then he brings up Von Miller. Like that's I didn't talk about Von Miller much in this. Like he was so underwhelming last year. It felt like he was out of. But just didn't he didn't feel right up here. And I know he had some upfield issues going on a little bit before that maybe. Uh, does he kind of, you know, I see him working out hard even last offseason, so I don't think it's that. But does he kind of just get back on track, you know, this off, get himself back on track? I, I guess it's, I think most of us are expecting him not to be that great. But if he, if he looked like Von Miller, I don't know if he's going to look like the vintage Von Miller, but if he looked like close to that, like good Von Miller, are we really going to be that surprised? Probably not. Like if he can ball out like Von Miller plays, you know, like that, like we know he does, like makes the Bills even more scary. So, and then Ryan O'Connell had like the same points as I had. That's why I put it on here. It's like what people are missing here. Like you could argue that the players, and he put it in a little different way. That's why I liked it. Um, Like they're equivalent or actually better. And people aren't realizing that because the names on the guys uh, maybe except Poyer, yeah, Poyer. I mean, Poyer and Hyde are very good, but my take on, like, those are covered two guys. Like, I, I, like they're really good at their their game, like, they're, and they can do a little more than that, don't get me wrong, they're only, I'm not saying they're only covered two, but they're, they were, they were brought over because they are stars in cover two, and that's what the Bills wanted to run, uh, McDermott and, and Leslie Frazier, uh, mainly Leslie Frazier always ran cover two, um, you know, that's why they were there, and they're trying to mix it up more. So that's another point. But, yeah, Hyde kind of old and getting injured. Benford's pretty solid. He's more reliable and probably better than White. Milano, yeah, they had Dotson at there at the end, which he was pretty – I don't know, PFF game. I mean, I'm not a huge PFF guy, but they had, they had gave him a pretty good grade. So he was playing pretty well, obviously. Um, but that was, like, their main linebacker down the stretch. Now they have Matt Milano, like a top three linebacker in football, back the most important guy, leader for this defense. Uh, Shakir Davis, that's the only one where uh, I get the point. I think they're just two totally different type of receivers. Coleman is the Davis replacement, but I get the point. Like, just impact-wise is what he means. Um, but, yeah, and then that's not even including the draft and not, you know, possibly coaching. I, I wait and see on the coaching there. So, But good points, another way of kind of saying what I was trying to say as well. Um, and then from Andy here, Bills will unleash Dalton Kincaid. He's right. He's, he's on page here with me. James. Co yeah. So he kind of listed what m most people would probably, that's why I like this one. People would look at that and say bold predictions. And I'm, and it kind of looked the way it's listed. It's kind of looked like that, but Dalton Kincaid unleashed James Cook finished top 10 in rushing. Didn't he do it last year? Josh Allen, 30 plus touchdown passes, 10 plus rushing. It's a lot, but I mean, it's Josh Allen and Bills still in the AFC East. To me, those are like, 
it's like bold but realistic takes there, like very realistic. So um, kind of on the same page. And then if you want a very bold prediction, Jacoby, who's been a fan for a while, had to take his. Keon Cole will lead the AFC East in touchdown reception. So and it's an interesting bold take because, yeah, we know Coleman's not going to be super productive play after play. Uh, you know, just getting separation. It's really not his game, but he's a big play guy. He's a contested catch guy. He's has potential to be really good in the red zone, you know, in the end zone, really getting touchdowns. So mostly AFC East is kind of like, yeah, guys that kind of get the ball in the open field and get the, get those yards. Um, and there's some guys that get touchdowns obviously, but uh, there isn't too many guys like this that you just, when you get in the red zone, you throw the ball up to. So could he do it as a rookie? Uh, we will see, but a lot of people are excited about Keon Coleman. Um, I, yeah, I'm curious to how they divide up those snaps and how they, in the alignment mainly for, for the receivers and tight ends. I'm, I'm really excited about the bills because uh, I like teams that it's a little bit of a mystery, but we know they're going to be good. They know they have these different factors, uh, but yeah, so some questions for the Buffalo Bills this year, but we know they're going to be a pretty damn good team. First comment with the team on this video, that that's the next team. That's the next one that I do. So I decided to do it for that. So we'll see what that will be. Trying to get a jump on these. We have a lot of teams to go. We have some already on the channel, channel in a playlist. Uh, check out our Twitter and sponsors, Liquid IV, Code Goat. Links pinned in the comments for all that. It's going to do it. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.